Welcome, everybody, to our season finale of Five Things. And on this episode, my co-host Charlie and I are going to be discussing five cancel culture shows that you should probably watch before they're gone. Yeah, so this is going to be a special two-parter where we're going to pick up this conversation on season two, episode one, where there are five shows that you should probably avoid that are going to get canceled, and they deserve to be canceled. But before we get into things, let's talk a little bit about cancel culture. I am inevitable. Not everything is like fine wine and ages well with time. As much as you may agree or disagree, some things in our pop culture no longer belong due to their theme and tone in its delivery. For example, in the 50s, there were ads that featured taglines like, most husbands nowadays have stopped beating their wives. That was an ad for ketchup. Or another one where the chef does everything but cook. That's what wives are for. And that was an ad for a mixer. Then there's racism in ads and cartoons and TV shows, and that's a canon itself that we're not going to go down. The term cancel culture became popularized in 2017 and has grown out of control, but the idea has been around for a long time. In times, it can be warranted, but other times, it's just a red holiday cup from Starbucks that's been a different design for each year. And with us today from OK Thank You is our guest, Mike Estrin. Hi. Hi, Mike. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Thanks yeah. for having me. Going well. Thanks for joining us. Not a problem. You ready to you ready to step in shit? Just hit every landmine possible? Because it's happening. <laughs> Welcome I'm to the end of your shoes. career. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that you want to plug? Yeah, our um our channel, okay, thank you. Um URL is just youtube.com slash okay thank you. We have a few lists on there from our old channel, List 25. Uh, we started that, but we've kind of veered more towards doing creative skits. We're actually filming one uh, this coming Wednesday. Um, so, yeah, check us out there. We're on uh, Twitter at OK Thank You YT, and I believe it's OK Thank You, possibly YT on Instagram as well. We have to get more active on that, but with everything that's been happening, we've been, uh, production is slowed, but we're, we're going to ramp it back up. All right, so how the show works, we go from five to one. And Mike, since you are a guest, take it off. My number five, it's a little different, but it, it, it it's stuck in my head, but I, I couldn't get it out. So it's not like cancel culture in a bad way, but I have Jeopardy. Ooh. And the reason for that is with Alex Trebek's passing, I don't know. You have on one end of the spectrum, The Price is Right, which Drew Carey did phenomenal and people loved him. And I don't know if Jeopardy is going to be the same. I think people are just like they went through that. What Dr. Oz was going is was a guest or is going to be the complete new person. But I don't see that going well. And I think people are going to riot like, you know, like they say, oh, if this goes wrong, I'm rioting. Um now, why, I'm just curious. Why do you think that Doctor Oz wouldn't be a good fit? I've I've watched one episode since he passed, and that happened to be a Doctor Oz episode. I guess it was the second time he hosted. He's the only one that's hosted more than once. You just don't think it's a good fit, or I don't think it's a good fit because um, one, I don't think the internet really likes him. So I think the popularity is going to possibly again cancel culture kind of thing where they're like, no, not you. We're we're not watching this. I'm sorry. Um, and two. <sighs> If you really kind of read into Dr. Oz, he's kind of a hack. And it's just like you're okay. you're he spreads a lot of misinformation. So to be on a trivia show that's supposed to spread facts and everything like that, to have someone who spreads misinformation, I don't think that meshes well together. And I just don't see him as a good fit. I really don't. That's Maybe better. personality. I think yeah. personality wise, I kind of thought it was a fit, but. That's I hadn't really read into it that much. I yeah, so. I'm sure. He, I mean, he's a TV personality. He knows what he's doing. He clearly has his own show. He was with yeah. Oprah. But I think once people start to realize, wait, this guy doesn't really spit the truth. I agree. So I wonder, you know, 
would it be Jeopardy being cancel cultured or maybe just him in general? And it's like, you know what? We made a mistake. Let's get rid of him. I'm hoping it's that because Jeopardy is a great show, but it's one of those things I don't, <sighs> people hate change. Uh-huh. So who knows? That might be the nail in the coffin for it. I, I don't know. It might be so tied to Alex Trebek. Can it go on without him? Fine, though. Because you know what, guys? It's fucking coming. It's coming. And that's where that's where this all leads to. They turned around and they created a show about nothing. And they've actually already had a canceled episode, which I forgot about until I saw it. I think on a watch mojo list. They had something that had to do with it was like Puerto Rican Day or something like that. Yeah, burning of the flag. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. And it was a, it was supposed to be lighthearted. I think it was Kramer that ends up burning the flag or something like that by accident. He's a big idiot. And that's the whole thing too, is that with all this stuff. Why does Derek Cartman get to say whatever he wants? Because he's a fucking idiot. Because he's a moron. He says yep. stupid things. So he, the stupid character says the stupid thing. Peter Griffin says the stupid thing. They've acknowledged the fact that Peter Griffin is basically, uh, you know, has a learning disability, lack of a better term or whatever. So he kind of gets away with saying questionable things. Kramer, Cosmo Kramer, I don't know. I think he's, you know, got something going on. He does the stupid thing, but it doesn't matter. That episode gets canceled. And I'm telling you, give it time. Seinfeld will eventually look on as a show that pointed out these differences in people and put a microscope over it. Personally, I love it for that reason because I think it knocked everyone down a peg. It's one of those shows that made everyone look like we were just, we're just all a bunch of idiots. We're all just people are just, we're just a bunch of idiots. Everyone sucks. Everyone's the worst. It get over it. If we all could accept that we all suck, then I don't think cancel culture could survive. That's just my opinion. I suck. I'm the worst. I'm the fucking worst. <laughs> I'm but pretty like, great. I'm I don't not, know what you're talking about. I was, <laughs> I'm sorry for you to be like, I've known 15 minutes. I'm not going to disagree. <laughs> I was very close to putting this on my list. I really thought about it. It's like, man, this is probably a show because it has, you know, the popularity around it. It's probably one scandal away from being canceled completely. Maybe. it's. I think what saves it a lot of time is that, number one, Jerry Seinfeld is beloved. Yeah. You know what I mean? He really is. At the end of the day, everyone loves Jerry Seinfeld. So my number five, a little bit different from your guys' list, I'm looking at shows that I can still go out and find either on TV or a streaming platform or even purchase it. So my number five always started with a disclaimer before the show began and it's Beavis and Butthead. And the reason for the disclaimer was because some child set their house on fire yep. with their baby sister in the house. Mm-hmm. And that's what caused the disclaimer to be on there. And they couldn't say fire anymore. But that's not the only death that's linked to that show. Another kid uh, found an episode where, you know, they were throwing stuff off of an expressway bridge. And somebody did that with a bowling ball and it killed the baby in a car. I remember that story. I don't remember it being linked to the show. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. The fire one I remember. I think of all the crazy things that this show has, you know, done. The underage drinking. Uh, driving with no license. It, it, it was just, it's mind blowing that, uh, you know, you could still come across the show somewhere. Not only that, but it's getting rebooted. I watched the show a lot. Like, I'm not lying. In eighth grade, I spoke like I was butt it. I don't know what it was. It was just very influential. It just, yeah, I was walking around like this all the time. But my stepbrother, <laughs> Rob, who at the, who did not fucking like me, like, as, like, we get along great now, but my stepbrother in eighth grade was just like, you're a fucking idiot. Stop talking like that. <laughs> What are you talking about? I'm not talking like anything. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Next up for me is uh, it's kind of a combo. And I say that it's it's family guy slash the Orville. And I say that because of the Seth MacFarlane connection. And I love him and I love family guy and I love the Orville. And if you haven't seen the Orville, oh, my God, you need to. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I just. He's uh, one of those guys that he's 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 pretty good. I like him and everything, but I just get the feeling that at some point he's gonna say the wrong thing. Uh-huh. Uh, like if he's hosting, you know, uh, award shows or something, he's just gonna say the wrong thing. I think it's just a matter of time before then people are like, no, we want you gone. And that's you know he's all most of the voices on Family Guy is the creator and everything, and I just. That'll go, and I don't know if it'll affect the Orville because he's like the captain and the main character. 
So again, not because of the shows, but I think because of him, it'll affect both of those. I could see that. I could definitely yeah. see that. I'm surprised. Like you know, we were talking about uh, on our different topic there, but I'm surprised he's flown under the radar with the characters and the way he delivers yeah. certain things on Family Guy. You know, you know, look at Quagmire. You know, Quagmire in itself there should be, you know, stuff to get that show canceled. That's true. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. But what's the difference between Pepe Le Pew and Quagmire? One's bad and, and sexually harasses cats and one sexually harasses women. I don't know. Uh, Glenn Quagmire's a pedophile. <laughs> yeah. They ju- and, they, and they syndicate that episode. I just watched it like a week ago. Oh, really? Yep. And the, and the, and the, and the punchline, the closing punch, I felt, I feel like I'm getting really angry with this stuff. I'm trying not to be so, <laughs> it's just so <laughs> hypocritical. That's what bothers me. The, the closing punchline of the episode is Peter just being like, and Glenn didn't learn anything. Monday Night Raw. Vince McMahon can get away with fucking anything. But yeah, can absolutely. he? Yeah. NBC's in there and they're starting to cut a lot of the well, old stuff out. So I said that the wife and I were, and I said that same thing. I said, it's just like Joe Rogan experience. Spotify got Joe Rogan and they immediately x 25 episodes without him even knowing about it. I feel like NBC is going to do the same exact thing. But you got to understand the problem with that is that the Attitude Era arguably is the most profitable era from in professional wrestling. Forget WWE, just in general. They made so much fucking money. They would have to go episode by episode by episode and figure it out and and i'm telling you right now the other thing is that a lot of these things that they'd have to edit out are fan favorite stuff like it's stuff that they've spotlighted for 20 years again sable with the hands on her chest jerry the king waller talking about puppies and all that kind of stuff the gimmick where vince mcmahon is cheating on his wife with uh fucking what trish stratus which was legit that was like that was kind of shoot that he actually got caught, you know, cheating on his wife during that same time yeah. period. Edge banging Lita on Raw, like it goes yeah. on and on and on and on. And there's so much stuff. <laughs> the, the children that work at NBC now are gonna be like, you know, I don't really like this Stone Cold Steve Austin, Stone Cold Steve Austin guy, but that Chris Benoit, he can really work in the ring. Oh no! <laughs> you watch uh. it. <laughs> oh, oh boy. All right, well, my number four is Married with Children. Ooh! So, yeah, yeah, you think of, you know, Ed or, uh, you know, on the show making fun of, you know, obese people, uh, making mm-hmm. fun of gay people, mm-hmm. and then uh, glorifying, you know, hot women on the show. So I'm surprised that show is still around somewhere where you can see it, but it's probably one of those ones you're going to watch it before somebody catches on and says, you know what? Too many offenseful things in this. Let's get rid of it. On at like six in the morning yeah. is when you can catch it. I used to watch it before work. Yeah. And it's so tamed down. Like they literally show like 30 episodes because the latter three or four seasons of that was really any excuse to get chicks in bathing suits. Yeah, because really? there's an episode. Basically, yeah, yeah, there's an episode where there's you know a homosexual on it, and the guy puts a crown on his head, and you know he goes like, "Oh, that's why they call them queens." So you know, there's stuff like that that's out there. So yeah, I don't remember. I watched the show a little bit, but it's one of the ones like as soon as you said it, I'm like, "What was offensive about?" It? I'm like, "Right, he did make fun of a bunch." Because <laughs> that was one again, like Beavis and Butthead. I kind of would catch it, but I didn't watch it religiously. So I'd forgotten that he did that. Yep. All right, folks. You've got halfway through the list right now. You've dealt with my garbage. My garbage, I say that out of respect for Mike and David. These guys are pros. They're not a slack jaw yokel like me, Simpsons reference. I am the moron that says the dumb things. I am the Eric Cartman of this one. And you can accept it. You can walk away or you can keep watching. If you're going to keep watching, I would recommend a few things. Click the like button click the subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell. The notification bell is very important. That is YouTube's way of taking the weight off your shoulders and saying, Hey, you have a lot to do with your day. We're going to let you know when five things has a new episode. So make sure you do that for us. Like subscribe, hit that thumbs up. Anyway, number three, Mike, it's your turn. Rick and Morty. (laughs) Never going to happen. And it's Again, probably not, but it's one of those things. I'm just waiting for them to push the boundary so much 
mm-hmm. that it just again like you said he they blur his genitals they 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 you know they when they unbleep things and i just it's when i watch it it's really fun but there are definitely some times i'm just like ooh, like especially some of the uh, the more visual gags with like the the blood and guts and gore and everything mm-hmm. i'm just like they definitely seem to take pride and joy in pushing the boundaries and for me i'm like there's gonna be one part maybe they go too far uh for and against is that I always consider Dan Harmon to be Seth MacFarlane 2.0. Didn't Dan Harmon just, maybe just, but like two years ago, wasn't he in the news for doing something crappy? Yeah. Was that my. No, I you're right. Remember. 11 years ago, Dan Harmon made a video of uh, raping a baby doll. So that's what. That's what we're up to. It was 11 yeah. years ago? Good yeah. lord. I said two. I was way off. Well, I think it surfaced like oh, okay. you know, two, three years ago. I think okay. I think they still fall under the protected umbrella of it's animated. Yeah. They got a lot of things going for him. He is a he is another license to print money to marry with children. I put it up a little bit higher, uh, just because I'm really surprised. This my whole list is basically how surprised I am that it hasn't been booted already. The Benny Hill Show. Ah. So, yeah, I don't know if you guys ever seen it. it used to be on TV all the time. Is that is that still in syndication somewhere, or is it just uh, on streaming? Sure you can find. It. I haven't looked for it, but I'm yeah, sure I'm, you can find it somewhere. And you can still buy it, right? Because that's actually one of the shows that I want to own the entire series of. Yeah. Because you know, I thought it was funny, and again, I could separate the times and you know the the comedy from real life, right? But, you know, the guy went around groping people, but he got socked in the mouth when he did that stuff. But it was the glorification of sex and the meaning of women on that show uh, that I would think would lead it to being canceled completely. That's not talked about as much as it used to be. Right. But, you know, it's still part of the culture and it, you can still find it somewhere. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought of that one. I never really I, I never really watched a lot of Penny Hill. I always knew the little song gimmick. Yeah, I, maybe that's why it's not canceled. Everyone just really loves that song, and yeah. any excuse to have your favorite show do that. Yeah, <laughs> South Park. Uh, and again, for me, it's one of those ones I love. I will watch this religiously. I love South Park. I think it's fantastic, and I think again, it's it might be one of those times. When do they push the envelope too far? When when is uh when is it too much? But I think for them, their saving grace might be they make fun of literally everyone right so it's not yeah. like i think that will save them but there is still it's one of those things like God, are they going to go too far at one point but they're also weirdly insightful yes yeah. oh my yeah. they're like if you the, more so the older ones because they're but they like almost every episode has a moral and it's yeah. like they realize their people are awful like Eric Cartman is not meant to be a role model. You're supposed to look at him and go, no, do the opposite of this. Mm-hmm. And like, they don't have to even say it. You just, you should know that. And it, it's, it's a fantastic show and it's deeper than some people give it uh, certain episodes. And mm-hmm. I think, like I said, I think it's saving grace is they literally don't care who they make fun of. Like no one is off limits. So it's, it's equality in an, negative way i should because they're making fun of everyone but you know it's you know when no one really takes more brunt than other people bro that's the late 90s in a nutshell the great yeah. thing about the late 90s was just that everyone was getting picked on for like the pc culture was kind of out the window for a while and to me oh, that didn't exist in the 90s you know what i'm saying but like it was the attitude error it was it the was attitude everywhere 100 percent. and but but think about everyone got along all of our blemishes were on the outside. Every like meaning, not our blemishes on the outside. That's a terrible way to word that. But, but all of our like all we were all exposed to like you know our we were just everyone sucks. I'm gonna say it again, just like that. Everyone fucking sucks. <laughs> Mike, I think you'd hit the nail on the head. There's balance, right? So hey, there's this garbage, but you know what? There's a little moral behind it too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Balance is key for literally everything. Uh, uh, too much of anything is a bad thing, no matter what it is. And the best example is what's one thing that we need in our life to survive? Water. Guess what? Too much will kill you. Number two for me is MASH. Which is still in syndication. 
on, it's on TV land technically, or to be fair, but it's still in syndication. And I don't think I could think of a more obvious show that made light of transgenderism. Did it? They had a character that throughout the yep. series was trying to get out of the military by dressing like a woman. Yep. He was feigning being transgender in 1970, whatever. And that was the whole gimmick. He was just trying to get out of the military. So he, he'd dress in like, uh, you know, uh, uh, women, old ladies, Sunday best or whatever. They'd be like going, like going out to battle, whatever. He'd show up looking like the Chiquita yep. banana lady, that kind of stuff. Like, and that was the whole, the whole joke. And they would never let him go home because it was, they were at wartime and it was like, just couldn't, you know, they needed all the men they could get or whatever. I thought you were going to mention the, uh, the, the infamous episode with, uh, wasn't it the chickens? Yeah, that was, uh, cause he was, he was suffering PTSD while in the war and he was, you know, trying to tell the family to hush the chickens up, but really it was the kids and he just wasn't seeing it correctly. Right. I gotcha. Okay. Yeah. yeah no, I don't remember that one, but I'll, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. That's terrible stuff. But yeah. yep. Mash numero dos. Mr. Dave, you're number two. My number two is animated. It's Tom and Jerry. For all the same reasons that people are going after Looney Tunes, Tom and Jerry is right now flying under the radar. Just came out with a movie. It just came out with a movie. Here's why. We have Tom trying to drown Jerry in a bucket of water. We have Jerry cutting up uh, Tom's tail with knives. We have Jerry getting cooked on a hot plate. You have so much violence on that that slid under the radar. I love the cartoon, but Looney Tunes has kind of been pegged for the violence, and Tom and Jerry has kind of slid under the radar, so you got to get it in there before it's done. Yeah, I guess. I always thought that Looney Tunes took a bigger hit because of the um, like war propaganda stuff, and then they did like Bugs Bunny and Blackface, which... Uh, short little sidebar. I made my wife cry when I made her watch one of those one time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I always thought that that was really, that's good. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. I didn't really thought about that, but you're right. There was a fair amount of violence in those Tom and Jerry cartoons from back then. Yeah. That also, yeah. yeah. That also probably falls under that weird thing where, like, as, as Americans, for some reason, violence is a okay, but sexuality, no, how dare you? With the new movie coming out, you know, there may be some parents that go through some of that back catalog and start saying hey let me wait a minute my my kid can't watch that do you see what the mouse just did to the cat so my number one uh again love this show and i think it, it all determines on how they go about in the future but i think with everything that happened with uh the the protests and everything last year and the way that uh, unfortunately certain police still handle themselves now um depending on how they go in the future. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Ooh. I think um, they scrapped the entire last season because they had to rewrite it because they wanted to be more cognizant of people's feelings. I guess that's not the, the what I was going for. But they're like, oh, with everything that, with where America's at, especially with police right now, and we need to rewrite this and we need to make sure we send the right message and everything like that. But there's probably some people that like, you know, I don't know how much longer that can go if, uh, if they do the wrong thing again. And with mm-hmm. what's happening in our country right now and has been for a while, but it's only really coming to light now. So Brooklyn nine, nine was my number one. I, I'm surprised it uh, survived that wave right after everything that happened last year. You know, because cops went down, live PD went down. Right. They were talking about getting rid of law and order. So, yeah, that's a good yeah. good number one. Can I, can I just share something really quick about about this mm. idea, though? I, no. I, I, I mean, no, you can't. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, hit my care, I hit my word limit for the fucking episode. Um, <laughs> you can't win with that t- subject matter because you have to. If you're a cop show, you have to address it. Yeah. Because. People will get pissed off if you avoid it too. If you're yeah. in your, if you're in an alternate reality where this stuff didn't happen, well, then you're a piece of shit because you, you know, yeah. I don't know. I don't, I think that's a lose lose premise. I don't know. I can't see Brooklyn Nine Nine navigating through it. I really, it would take a cultural overhaul for that to be a good show afterwards. I'll say it like that. Like it's so hard. Yeah. I don't know. 
You know, that's that's the difference about sitcoms in the 70s and 80s, because they hit it head on. They weren't afraid to go after these topics, where now it's like, got to tiptoe around it so we don't get in trouble. Ready? Ready? Friends. And it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Wow. It's going to happen. Friends. Friends. Told you. Can I? Yep. Why? That was what? actually an honorable mention of mine. Friends is going to happen. And <laughs> I need number one, my honorable mention. Yep. Friends is going to happen. And I, it, it was always on my list, but I'm going to tell you why it's number one. And I keep mentioning my wife, Rebecca, because she's the Friends fan. I like Friends, but she's like, <clears throat> I didn't know this, but they already came under fire a while ago because the entire cast is just a bunch of white people. And it doesn't represent New York. Like that corner in New York does not fucking exist. Yeah. It just doesn't, that's not what, me, and I thought about it, I'm like, no, you're right, I've been to New York City, I've walked around New York City, it does not look like that at all. And it's just unrealistic, and it's just, now that we're getting into the reunion phase of stuff, and it's going to oversaturate again, they got away with oversaturating Netflix a couple of years ago, they got through that. That was five years ago-ish, something yeah. like that, maybe a little longer, well, a lot's changed. I remember talking with my friends about Friends, and actually, because I love it. And to hear like four of them be like, no, it's, it's, it's shit. I hate it. I hate the way they, they treat like, uh, like how they, like with, uh, Chandler's mom mm-hmm. being, having the Viva Las Vegas and everything like yeah. that. And like, it's a terrible representation, but I'm like, I never thought about it. And so to mm-hmm. see all these people, like, like it was like a group of like six and I have like four or three of them hate the show. I'm like, damn. I, okay. Are They're they looking others. through it? Are they looking at through it? Are they looking at it through the lens of 2021? Are they looking at it through the lens of 1999? It's two uh, very different things. Yes, yeah. I know, and, and that's a you know what I mean. But this again, this is where the argument lies. Yeah. Yeah. It is definitely number one on the list, kind of the king on the list for me, and it's all in the family. And I think it kind of falls in line with what Mike said earlier about South Park, where you know. It's putting the problem in front of your face, and it's so negative, but there's a moral to it. And that's kind of like what Meat had to always try to play, balance out Archie Bunker. And I think the studios at the time is like, hey, let's throw this controversial topic out there and try to change people's perspective on it to see through the right lens. You know, not just because of the episodes where, you know, Archie's wearing blackface, and then he finds out why it's wrong, or, you know. He's good friends with somebody and his friend is suddenly gay and they reunite after a long time and he has some homophobia about it. But it was even with politics and everything else where he had his standpoint and the opposite was always thrown at his face. And you can kind of see him sometimes leaning towards that. You know, you think of him as a bigot, but then, you know, his neighbors were the Jeffersons. And when something happened to them, he actually took offense to it. So you could see where they were always trying to balance it out. Yeah. Yeah, that was a show that was ahead of its time for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was kind of a slow burn. And I think what the show sort of did, now it's before my time, really, I watched, like, my grandfather had, like, the box set tapes or whatever that we used to kind of catch. It was out of sequence. But the impression that I always got was that the slow burn of it was, like, so at the beginning of the series, Archie Bunker is, like, your atypical middle-aged guy for that time period and then as he grows like you're saying like he learns and as he grows by the end these things are a different perspective by then or whatever i don't know that people especially younger people have the attention span to wait out that sort of a arc all right charlie you want to wrap us up all right folks hopefully we didn't drag you down too much with all that (laughs) <laughs> uh, <laughs> you've been with us from the beginning you've seen my five, Mike's five and Dave's five, last I checked math that's 15 15 shows that you should check out before they inevitably get get cancelled, then a couple of honorable mentions it's all important stuff This is these are things that ultimately I think the goal is that none of this stuff ever gets cancelled if I could speak for my co-host that at the end of the day it's important to see what we have done in the past and to, and to recognize maybe where we can do better. And I think that's the point that at least that I try to get across. Anyway, at the end of the day, what you want to do is you want to make sure you hit that subscribe. You want to hit that like, and most importantly of all, hit the notification bell. That means that you will be notified when five things has another list. Once again, I have been Charlie. 
This has been Dave and our guest, Mike. I hope you guys have a wonderful few weeks. We'll be back for season two. Dave, do you have a date for us by any chance? No, no date just yet, but it will be season two, season one, part two of this on the flip side. Mike, if you're available for it, hopefully you'll kick us off with that one as well. Let me know when. All right. So then, catch you guys later. Bye, guys. Bye.